The crater um, is a, a caldera or extinct volcano with the effect that the volcanic soils could support one of the highest densities of wild prey biomass on the planet, which in turn supports an incredible density of predators, including lions. So as an apex predator, they do have a disproportionately important ecological role in terms of introducing balance in the system. If you remove lions from the system, wildlife populations can really kind of go out of whack. Certain species become more abundant at the expense of other species. So lions are one of the most sought after, if not the most sought after species among tourists coming to Africa. Most tourists visit parks that are relatively well protected. And so normally you're fairly unlucky if, if you don't see them, and very often you'll see them several times. And this gives a kind of false sense of security in a sense, because it gives the impression that lions are abundant. But the reality is that there are species that have suffered a very steep decline in recent years. Their numbers have declined by about half over the last 25 years, which is extremely steep. There's likely somewhere between 20 and 25,000 and, and, and it's possible there are fewer than 20,000. Lions are the victim of the very rapid changes that are happening in, in Africa. You know, Africa is changing faster as a continent than any other continent has ever changed. Lions are declining as a result of a combination of habitat loss, of loss of their prey populations through bushmeat poaching. It's a really, really big issue. They're also affected by human lion conflicts are wherever people and lions coexist. There, there's typically conflict because lions will attack and consume livestock and so people will kill lions in retaliation. Lions are increasingly poached for their body parts for the international trade and in wildlife products and in some cases they're killed as part of ritual killing so kind of rites of passage. The Lion Recovery Fund was set up by Wildlife Conservation Network, which is a, an NGO that's based in, in the US. He designed a science-based strategy with which to invest funding in lion conservation. So we raise as much funding as we can from as diverse a set of sources as possible. And then we invest 100% of the funds we raise um, in projects that are designed to protect lions themselves, protect their habitats, and to protect the prey on which they depend. And lions, we really see them as a flagship species, so they're a, a charismatic and popular species. They're also an umbrella species, and, and what that means is that if you can protect a habitat such that it's able to support a lion population, it means that it's able to support almost everything else that occurs there. And the main kinds of projects that we support are supporting the management of underfunded protected areas, making sure there's anti-poaching and, and management, uh, supporting projects that promote the coexistence of people and wildlife so in the areas around and in between the protected areas. And then thirdly, tackling the illegal wildlife trade, which in the context of lion conservation principally means tackling the bushmeat trade and tackling the trade in lion body parts. So part of what we do is we find existing projects that are operating. We have three buckets. We consider all lion populations as being important but we look at three contexts and we call it retain, recover and rescue. So we can help an effective project with an NGO that's got a proven track record. If we can help them scale up th thematically, so take on different sets of activities or scale up geographically to expand their area of operation, then those are the kind of projects that, that we invest in. So I'm here to visit um, Cope Lion Project, which is um, which operate in the Ngorongoro conservation area, including the craters. Although you can't see it from this distance, this, this crater floor here is literally teeming with thousands and thousands of, of animals. And there are a, there is a high density of lions in there. So it's absolutely, absolutely critical landscape for lions and lion conservation. And so I'm really excited to be here and to see more about what of our, one of our grantees, uh, Cope Lion, is doing. Right, I'm here this morning with Ingela Janssen. Yeah, so in the crater I've, I continue the long-term demography study started by the Serengeti Lion Project, um, where we have data going back to the early 1960s. And in that we follow each and every individual uh, lion. We recognize them and we, uh, yeah, we note down the important life history data from throughout their lifespan. We have uh, around 80 lions in the crater. The majority of the lions are um, 
are juveniles, cubs and juveniles. Adult population guarded is four years and older. Um, and there we don't, it's not that many, it's about 28. And there are six prides. So we look at the, the most important clue for the line ID is the whisker spot pattern. So looking at the, these lines represent the, the whisker rows. And then above those whisker rows and sometimes in between, you have a set of spots and it's right. the number and position of the spots that are, is a unique pattern. So there, really the work we, we do is um, working for a model of uh, more sustainable long-term human line coexistence uh, and doing that by partnering with the communities and other stakeholders. Partnering with the communities, engaging them in the conservation work has uh, shown to be really uh, successful here. So we're, we've implemented the Line Guardians model where you employ uh, local um, warriors that work in their immediate home area to, to uh, prevent uh, carnivore predator conflicts directly on the ground with their communities. Right. And also they're there helping to monitor the lions and also to protect the lions when conflict does happen. Being connected directly in the communities, these are guys that they know the landscape, they know the lions already um, and they also know the, the, the other warriors that may go out on the hunt and they're much better able to talk to them than I would be. I'm going to talk to you briefly about the Serengeti National Park in Tanzania. Serengeti is probably Africa's single most important protected area for, for lions. Um, it has one of, if not the largest, single populations of, of, of lions in, in Africa. Um, but the park is under a lot of pressure from various human threats and one of those threats comes from snaring for, for bushmeat. Um, commercial bushmeat poachers set snares to catch animals to, to obtain meat to sell and this poses two risks for lions. So one is that, that the snares themselves can, can kill lions but also it could cause reduction in prey populations and if that were to happen it would cause the lion population to decline. Now we support the work of Frankfurt Zoological Society in Edna Serengeti who in turn partner with TANAPA, the Tanzania National Parks Authority. They do a variety of activities but we support two elements of their work. So this includes desnaring teams which, which remove snares from, from the landscape that are set by bushmeat poachers. Um, we also support the work of, of FZS and TANAPA um, through their anti-illegal livestock grazing teams because there's a lot of pressure from, from illegal livestock grazers to move cattle into the park which would cause competition with wild prey. And I must say we've been incredibly impressed by the work of FCDS and Tanapa. Morning Abdullah. Abdullah here is a guide with Ambient in Lake Manyara National Park. Uh, Abdullah, uh, this park is famous for the tree climbing lions. There's just a few places in Africa where lions are, are known to climb trees. Why do they climb trees? Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Um, Lake Manyara National Park uh, in Tanzania is one of the most beautiful parks for everyone to visit. The park is well known for its tree climbing lions. And they, they do climb in other places, but in Manyara is one of the very first places for, for lions to be recorded climbing the trees. Uh, actually, we're talking about a huge tree like this. Uh, this is Acacia Have you seen trees. lions in this exact tree? Exactly. I have seen lions a few times on this particular tree, and that's right. why I brought you here. Uh, the reason is uh, because is, um, um, the, the park is quite thick in some areas. So uh, because of the thick vegetation, the lions have to go up to have a good visibility to their prey. Also getting away from the uh, very hot temperature at the bottom. They right. go higher because of the cooler breeze. Uh, apart from that, also uh, elephants, because the park is thick, there's a very, very narrow path. Uh, so when lions are racing on the ground and they sense elephants coming on their way, they also climb trees to get away from elephants. Right. And I have seen that. Elephants chase lions right. and they go up on the tree to, to avoid the, the, the elephants. And I asked myself with the king of the jungle then. We're, this is Mali, uh, a guide with and beyond here. Mali, could you tell me a little bit about the, the, the lions here? Um, firstly, how many do you think there are, roughly? In Lake Manyara, we've got lions, like between 20 and 30 lions, and it's actually a quite healthy population of lions. 
And one of the big issues is the human population increase. Like Manyara National Park is becoming like an island right. where these wildlife corridors have been closed due to increase of human population and competition due to agricultural activities and also livestock um, grazing areas. But also poaching, poaching also an issue. We have been encountering some wire snares that could trap any animal, elephant, feet or trunk, or as well as it can also affect the, the lands as well, yeah. and hyenas and other species. So that could also be uh, a threat to the conservation of, of, of lands and general wildlife in Lake Manyare. Yeah, so the tourism industry is a very important actor in African conservation. It's an enormous industry, it generates huge revenues for a number of African countries and is a very important factor in terms of incentivizing efforts by African countries to continue to conserve their wildlife. As a partner for the Lion Recovery Fund, we, we recognize the, the power and scale of the tourism industry. And so we formed this entity called the Lionscape Coalition, which is a partnership between the tourism industry and the Lion Recovery Fund. And so the Lionscape Coalition has enabled us to bring competing companies together to work together behind a single conservation effort, raise funding to invest to protect tourism hotspots, but also to protecting areas of land where tourists at the moment don't go. And what's important, I think the last thing to say about this is that the tourism companies in Africa, in a sense, your markets, your, your customers are the single largest body of, of wildlife aficionados or wildlife lovers or African wildlife lovers on, on earth. So it, it, it provides access to an extremely important constituency. And so it's really important avenue both raise funding for, for lion and savannah and wildlife conservation, but also to raise awareness.